Hi, this is Zin Lin from Forgotten Food Network. So she's going to tell us about the food and why they are forgotten food. Yep, so this is kevaru roti and this is watermelon karabu or watermelon salad. Why are they forgotten foods? Like why is the kevaru and... Um, firstly, the finger millet itself, it used to be grown um, a lot in the northern Malaysia but not anymore nowadays. So my colleague used to make it using freshly harvested finger millet flour but we can't do it anymore. So what we did is to buy finger millet flour from the supermarket shelves. And then for this watermelon karabu, this is the hometown memory of my colleague. So she just can't find any more uh, watermelon karabu anywhere else in Malaysia. Tan Zin Lin and her Forgotten Foods Network team have a mission to preserve recipes that are long forgotten. They work in their centre to conduct studies on the nutritional content of ingredients used in these forgotten recipes to produce food that is more sustainable for the world's growing population. The Forgotten Foods Network is spearheaded by Crops for the Future and it is a global initiative to study alternative crops from all over the world. The CEO said they are also looking to commercialise sustainable food products from these alternative crops. A long time ago when I started work on these crops, there were usual criticisms. They're underutilised for a reason. Why do we want to work on these old crops? You know, at the end of the day, if they were any good, we'd have discovered them by now. Now the world recognises these crops are actually enormously powerful because they give us opportunities to diversify our food systems, give us crops we can grow on land that's no longer suitable for the major crops and critically they give us opportunities to increase the nutrition. Now if we can use these crops to provide nutritious, marketable ingredients that people actually want to buy and consume, we can see these crops becoming much more significant around the world. Said said the reliance on only four types of crops, namely rice, maize, wheat and soy, will not be sustainable in the long run. Crops for the future is about future climates. And if we can't grow crops that we now grow, what will be the alternative crops that we will have to grow when the country gets hotter, when it gets drier, when the environment actually is changing very dramatically? If we're going to find those foods, we need the crops that will actually provide those foods in the future climates. And that's why Forgotten Foods to feed the future. And that's the critical point is, it's not just let's get some recipes, very important, get the recipes, collect them, preserve them. According to Said, by 2050, the Earth will have a population of about 9.7 billion people and this will pose a challenge in feeding the world. And the crops for the future, set up in 2011, said it is up for the challenge. <laughs>